and hello everyone god it's been forever since i've seen you all i hope you're all doing well i've had so many things planned and so many things have gone wrong those of you in our discord know some of the things that have been happening and why i haven't been around but now we're starting to get back to normal and today is kind of a special video because i'm actually recording this on my birthday so i have friends coming over tonight and i'm making a big dish that all of us will enjoy it's got some we've got some everything in it we've got chicken we have vegetables we have shrimp we have smoked sausage and for those of you who can figure it out yes we are doing a take of a jambalaya why because it's quick this way is quick it's easy it feeds a ton of people and guess what it's cheap when you make it like this, it just works out really, really economically. Sorry, I've got all my ingredients down here, and they're sort of just falling all over the place. It's quick, it's easy. It doesn't take a ton of stuff to do, but it is so satisfying. And right now, it is cold, damp. We're going to have snow. I hate saying it. There's that dirty four-letter word to everyone who lives in the area. You know what I mean. So, in a classic jambalaya, you're always going to have, as they say, something that swims, something that flies, and something that crawls. Traditionally, you're going to have things like frog legs, and duck, and rabbit. I'm not doing that. I'm keeping it really simple. Like I say, I've got some really nice smoked sausage. Now, I cannot get andouille sausage here as much as I want to, which is a really nice smoked ham-based sausage. So this is just a double smoked pork sausage, but it'll give us that same smokiness that we want. I've got a pound of peeled shrimp. Now, these were shell-on shrimp, and I just peeled them, it took two seconds to do, and I got raw. Never get cooked shrimp, especially if you're gonna be cooking them again. We'll just turn them into little rubber bullets. Then we have some peppers, some chicken. Yes, they're on the same board. Yes, they're touching. Yes, is there a risk of cross-contamination? For sure, it is cross-contaminated, but I'm cooking it all. It's all going in the pot together. So anything that was there is gonna get cooked off. If those peppers were gonna be used raw on something, I would never do that. But for what I'm doing here, it's fine. We also have, for our convenience, a mirepoix. This is carrot, celery, and onions that are pre-chopped and frozen. Again, not traditional. Traditionally, it would be done with bell peppers, onions, and celery. But I have the bell peppers here. The only thing I'm adding is the carrot in this case because I like the little sweetness it adds. Plus, I can't get the other one frozen. <laughs> we have some low sodium chicken stock. We have some rice. Again, tradition is normal everyday white rice. To me, that's bland, has no flavor, even though we're cooking it in with all these other flavors. So I'm just gonna use some basmati. We have some tomato sauce or tomato coulis. And then for our spices, we have just a Cajun spice mix, and we have some good old cayenne pepper. And just for the saltiness, believe it or not, the MSG, and a little more chickeny flavor, a chicken stock cube. Really, that's it. Of course, salt and pepper. Over here, I have my skillet. It's already heating up with some butter. Yes, butter. This is cooking from Louisiana. Cooking with oil, pretty rare. So, this is nice and ready. Don't know if you can hear that. We are going to pause. We're going to swap over the camera. And let's get some cooking done. Because I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. So there, as you can see, we have our skillet. Nice deep one. We have our butter melted in there. And we're going for, well, 
whatever's left in this bag <laughs> of our Miraflor. There's not a ton. It's maybe like one small onion, a couple of stalks of celery, and a carrot. And the ice from the freezer. <laughs> if you have ice on it, don't worry. We're cooking it. We're just going to let that saute a little bit. We are going to add a pinch of salt at this point. And now, while that's cooking, because we want the flavors to come out from this, is we are going to add that smoked sausage. When it all cooks together, those fats come out. The other thing I'd like to add at this point is basically, where's the camera? There we go, a whole garlic clove. I've got a lot of people coming over. I'm going to add two. <laughs> the reason I do a whole clove is I don't want this to taste like an Italian dish. I want it to taste good. So that is just going to add a mild flavor. And as it cooks, it's going to just soften and be a very mellow background flavor. And being whole, if I really want, I can pull them out when I'm done. So we're just going to turn our heat up on here. We're going to go over a medium high heat. Basically, at this point, just till you can smell your onions, you can start smelling that sausage. You can see there's more fat in the pan because the sausage is rendering out. go and use a big pen a bigger pen than you might think you need because once the rice and everything goes in here it's going to swell and it's going to make a lot <laughs> so you need that extra space so you can hear that sizzle you can hear everything doing its job As it is now, it smells so good, and we haven't even done anything. What I am going to add at this point is those chicken and peppers. We're going to get those cooking. so bright, so colorful. It's inviting. It makes you want to eat it. We'll get some more stuff in there. Let's add our pepper. Got two teaspoons, tablespoons. A little bit more, a little bit less. And if you don't want to do this with chicken and fish, just do it with vegetables. Make a vegetarian version of this. Go ahead. If you're feeling adventurous, change the meats. Add different sausages. Add a hot sausage to this. Something with like a smoked jalapeno sausage would be really good. Now, all I'm doing here is I'm lightly cooking the chicken. I'm not trying to cook it all the way through right now. Because once everything is in here, this is going to simmer for a bit. For those of you with a keen eye before notice, that rice I had isn't cooked. It's just going to cook in the liquids that we're going to make for this. So, right now I'm going to add one of those chicken cubes. So that's going to add some saltiness. It's going to add some extra chicken flavor. Yes, it has MSG, but guess what? MSG just helps bring out flavors. 
think of it as extra strength salt. It just is good. And when used in small amounts and not every day, it's not going to hurt you. That is smelling so good already. Now, here is where you can get adventurous, you can get daring, or you can play it safe. Cajun spices. The one I have, I know, is hot. So I'm adding about two teaspoons. I can always add more. It's very hard if I put too much to take it out. But by putting it in now, it's going to work its way into all these flavors. It's not just going to like stand out and punch you in the face and go, hey, I'm Cajun seasoning. No, it's just going to be a background flavor. Same thing with a bit of cayenne. Going about a quarter teaspoon there because I can always add more. And chances are I will. But it's really hard to taste at this point. But I want to get those flavors in. I want to get them starting to work. Now that we have those in, you can see we're getting some nice juices over here. We're getting some nice flavors forming. So I've got one box, which is one liter, four cups of low sodium chicken stock. I'm going to add about two cups, half the box. Again, because I can always add more if I need it. But it's always better to be on the safe side and add a bit less than add too much. And it turned everything from a jambalaya into a soup. Next, told you it goes fast once you get started. That whole jar of tomato sauce, tomato coulis, strained tomatoes, whatever you like. I try not to get ones that are too seasoned. I want the tomato flavor, and I don't want this to taste like a spicy tomato sauce. So that's just going to cook for a couple of minutes, not even, just till I see some bubbles forming on, Ooh, I can smell the hot stuff already. We're ba basically waiting until we see just a couple of little bubbles start on the tomato sauce, and I can already see them over here, I'm sure you can too, there we go, see it's already starting to spit up. Now we're going to add, in this case, Roughly a cup and a half of the basmati rice. And like I said, you saw, I didn't cook it. It went right in. Didn't even wash it. You know why? Because I want the starches in that rice that you would normally wash off when you when you when you wash it. I want them in here because they're going to thicken things up. And guess what? That's it. That now goes down to low. We're going to take our lid. We're going to cover it. And... And that is it. About 5-10 minutes before the... Before it's ready. It will be a about 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. Then we'll mix in our shrimp. Five minutes for them to cook. We'll let those flavors all mingle together for a little bit. And then we'll taste it. This is going to be spicy. It's going to be hot. But it's going to be good. So, 15 minutes to... 
put everything together to the stage where you can now walk away. It's on low. If this cooks for half an hour, if this cooks for an hour, it's okay. The longer it cooks, the more flavors you're going to develop. If when you check it to come and stir it, you see it's getting a bit dry, add a bit more of your stock. If you want it like really, best way of putting it, soupy, definitely add more stock. If you want it drier, towards the end, take the lid off and let some of the steam evaporate. So there we go. We'll come back when that is ready. You'll all get to see the final product. I'll get to have my birthday dinner. My friends will be here by then. So until then, have a great day and we'll see you all soon. Hello and we are back. As you can see, this is done. It's all nice. Everything has been absorbed. Now, those of you with a keen eye will also notice we've added some pasta to this. <laughs> I found out there's more people coming than I thought. And I didn't have any more rice. So we added some pasta, which is fine. It'll all still taste great. We also added our shrimp. I added these about maybe five, six minutes ago. So they cook really fast. We're gonna dish up a little bowl because I don't want to eat too much before everyone gets here. And let's do the tasting. And well, there we go. Let's have, let's have a small bowl. <clears throat> I lied. The more I looked at, the longer I've been smelling this. This has been cooking for about an hour. It was, everything was ready in about 30 minutes but I let it cook and simmer and thicken up a bit. Because for me, after about half an hour, for my taste, it was still a bit too soupy. And then also, well, <laughs> I had to add the pasta because four extra people, not enough rice. So I want to get the perfect bite. I want some of that chicken. I want some of that sausage. I've got a little shrimp in there. Big bite. I don't know. My mouth's watering. I don't know how spicy this is yet. I didn't check that. This might be really hot. This might be okay. I might have to add some. Or I might have to try and tune it down. We'll find out. And plus, you can see how hot that is. Here we go. Big bite. Mmm. Okay, tasting those peppers, that little hint of garlic, the smokiness of that sausage comes right through. With the pasta, it's actually not bad. Mm. I guess if you have people who aren't rice fans, they can have it with... Oh... There's the spice. It's delayed. It sneaks up on you. Oh, that's good. It's not overwhelming. It's not like I can't handle this. It's just, it lets you taste everything. I got the sweetness of the peppers. I got the chicken. I got that smokiness, like I said. The shrimp, which are so good. One right there. Mm. But then, whew, then the cayenne gives you that little punch. The rest of the Cajun spice comes in. There's a side of the tongue and the back of the mouth burn. Not bad at all. Really, really good. I didn't adjust any seasonings from what you saw. The only thing, like I said, I added was I did add some pasta. I added the shrimp and I did add the extra stock cube. So we used two of the stock cubes in total. That is so good. The chicken, 
Oh. Mm. <coughs> Melts in your mouth down here. I really hope you try this. If you're worried about the heat, just do like a teaspoon of the Cajun seasoning and maybe just a sh one sprinkle of the cayenne. You can always add after. Like I say, it's really hard to get rid of that burn once it's cooked. And if you really want, shot of your favorite hot sauce on this would be really good too. A little bit of Frank's on there. Hmm. I hope you have a great day. <laughs> Before I sit here and finish this whole bowl, friends are just waiting in the other room. I really hope that you try this recipe. I hope you enjoy it. Leave me a comment down below. Do you like this? Do you want to see more videos of these improvised dinners? As I said, this is not authentic. It's close. Ooh, there's that. There's those Cajun spices warming up. It's not authentic, but it's close. The flavor is there. The technique was a bit different, and some of the ingredients we used were a bit different. But other than that, it gets you in the ballpark. We can do gumbos, we can do po'boys, we can do beignets. Those are coming. Those are coming, and soon. Have to do some beignets. How can you tell I miss going to New Orleans? Missing the French Quarter, missing Bourbon Street. So, that's it for now. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it's been almost a month since I've seen you guys, but... We're back on track. We will be back again really soon. One thing we have coming up, I'm just waiting for something to arrive first. In the States, you guys have Olive Garden. We don't have it here. And I've had it before, and I remember the breadsticks. Like, come on, they were so good, and they were all you can eat. But they, I can't get them here. So I'm going to make my own. We are going to make a copycat Olive Garden breadstick. That will probably be next week's video. So I really hope you stay tuned. Please remember, leave a like, hit the bell notification. If you're not subscribed, subscribe already. It's free, it costs you nothing, and it helps me a lot. And most of all, leave me a comment down below. So until we meet again, I hope you all have a great day. I know I'm going to have a lot of great food, and we will see you again really soon. Bye for now.